All right, y'all, Papa Pepper back here at the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I want to thank you for joining me once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how we have ripe peppers. Look at this Vitali here. Look at that thing. Ripe peppers ready to harvest in January, zone 6B7A in the Ozarks. No greenhouse, no geothermal, um, nothing like that. And yet, I can harvest a ripe pepper right now in January and I'm actually up in my garden right now. So my garden is pretty much a desolate wasteland for this time of the year. Uh, we do a lot of more free ranging with our poultry sometimes in the fall and winter. We're not in the massive egg production, the going broody, the, that type of thing. So we turn them loose a little bit more. Whereas when they're laying eggs and going broody, we kind of want them to lay eggs places we know about and go broody places that uh, you know, we can find them and know that they're sitting there. Otherwise, if they're out unprotected, a fox, a possum, a raccoon, something else could come and get them. Right now, I was just doing some pruning of my cold hardy kiwi vines, vines. And this year, my goal is to actually have them produce. I'm not even sure how many years I've had them. Probably four or five, at least. And um, I haven't really pruned them yet, ever. So that's my project through this winter season. I'm not gonna get it done today. It's an absolute mess. But it's basically a desolate wasteland. Not much is growing. We don't really have a lot of stuff we plant sometimes for the winter stuff because the animals are out so much and they will just nibble down any little green thing they can find. We're probably gonna change that in the future and get into more and more winter gardening. But this here is an example of something that I did in Wisconsin as well. And probably at least back 2012, maybe 2011, I um, started gardening the pepper in Papa Pepper. I got a whole video on it if you guys want to check it out. But it comes from super hot peppers. Really appreciate them, got into them, had like a 20 by 30 garden back in central Wisconsin. About 75% of that sometimes would just be hot peppers from around the world. And um, then we started having more children, started growing more other stuff. But favorites are ghosts, Fatali's. I classify, I basically say they're like a um, yellow ghost from Africa, is basically what a Fatali is. And you can see here, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have at least seven other fruits besides this one that's ripe right now. So I'm actually gonna harvest this, okay? I'm harvesting peppers, no greenhouse, in January. And the way that I do that, um, Back in Wisconsin, I used to start my hot peppers by about mid-February. And I wouldn't plant them outside till like June 1st because we'd have a possibility of later frost just taking things out. But I wanted to get something healthy and established. And then, of course, by the end of October, a lot of times it may already be snowing. So I had that short window of opportunity here. It's nice and longer. That was part of what we considered when we moved down here is that I wasn't giving up much, but I was gaining a much longer growing season. And most of what I grow up there, I can still grow here. I can just grow all sorts of other things and got a lot longer to grow it. Um, but one thing I started doing in Wisconsin then is rather than fighting that so much and starting with a little plant every year and then having a short growing season trying to get to grow, um, we began lifting them. So at the end of the season, before that first frost, I'd pick some of my favorite ones. We had a, a Pekin pepper from down in South Texas. I think we originally got from one of my wife's aunts and we brought it back on a trip we had. And then I, for year after year, I would bring that in every winter and that thing got really tall. Had it in a five gallon bucket. Um, also started doing other ghost peppers. Had a buddy up in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. He started doing that with a lot of his, just bringing them in and overwintering them. For me, I would bring them into the basement, set them there. I'll often grab them out of the soil in the garden and put them in a five gallon bucket and then just kind of let them go dormant-ish, but not die. Because um, far enough south, the pepper is going to be a perennial plant anyway. And then the next spring, I'd bring one like this out to the garden and plant it rather than a seedling. So this one actually is in a pot. So that's how I'm able to have this happen, okay? When these were still out here, I forget exactly where this one was, but it was growing out here somewhere. Um, all these got pollinated and they just weren't ripe yet. So now they're ripening inside. This, like I said, is basically like a ghost pepper. I'm gonna take a little uh, nibble of it. Oh yeah, that's that flavor. To me, if I was blindfolded 
and I bit this. Mmm. Wow. I would think this was a ghost pepper if you blindfolded me and asked me what it was. Um, kind of like the Ugandan elephant repellent. I gotta see if I still got seeds for it. I got a video on that, but when I grew, I think I got a video on that. But when I grew my Ugandan elephant repellent, it was kind of like a Pekin pepper, um, but it tasted a lot like this too, just in a tic-tac, little red tic-tac shaped form. So this is absolutely awesome. And I would recommend this. If you have indoor space, even if you don't have a greenhouse, you're not having, you know, a cold frame. You can just pick them up and bring them in the house. And maybe it's just a favorite plant. Maybe if you got one that just does amazing, I'll tell you what, the seeds from this may be cross-pollinated with something else. Could happen. I wasn't specific to keep this one away from everyone else, the ghost peppers I did. But since it's the same plant, these are going to be true to kind next year. I'm going to plant this and be able to start with this and have it probably get... I don't know, four or five. I had some Carolina Reapers over six feet tall the other year just cranking out a harvest. And I really like starting with something like this. I meant to do this with my ghost peppers too, but I I missed it. I came out too late. I also want to start some stuff with uh, sweet potato slips. I'm actually in a sweet potato bed right now where at the end of the year, before it freezes, I cut down a bunch of the uh, the vines and then plant them. And then have them grow as a house plant through the winter, return them to the soil again in the spring, and not have to worry about keeping the actual sweet potatoes through the winter, but just use, you know, the slips. I think that'll work. I think it'll be good, but I want to get better at it. And of course, as we progress with life, as we set ourselves up better on this property, I want to kind of incorporate it into my lifestyle where I'm making sure to catch things. Like I could have ghost peppers like this too. This is the only pepper I've got right now like this, but I love it. Okay, it's, it's months before I'm going to be able to eat one from the garden, even with planting this. Once these are done, they're going to have to flower, get pollinated, set fruit. Then the fruit's going to have to ripen. So now I can enjoy this right now, even though it's the second week of January right now. Absolutely awesome. I love that. If you guys haven't done it yet, I'd highly recommend it. it get, it's going to give me a bigger harvest next year off of this one plant. It gives me the chance to eat them now, starting with a bigger plant. I just like it. It's got a lot of benefits for it. And eventually then too, I do want to get a geothermal greenhouse and some other things growing. But while I wait for those hopes and dreams of the future, this is something I can do right now. I'll see you next time. Pop out. This book started as a story that a grandpa used to tell us. We decided to take some pictures to turn it into a book. And I took all the pictures for the book. If you want a great story for your children or grandchildren, you can buy it on Amazon and in our Etsy store. The link will be in the description and in our pinned comment. And if you order it from our Etsy shop, I'll even autograph it for you. See? It even says here I'm the photographer.